Yo guys, what is good? Welcome back to SP Vids. In this video, I'm going to be explaining exactly how I put together my latest beat tape. If you haven't checked that out yet, it'd be really cool if you could just head over to SoundCloud and search for SP Vids, or you can use the link below which I've put in the description for you. I was really good fun making this one and one of the best parts about it was I got to use a lot of my 202. I haven't really used it that much so I was like I want to get this involved in the in the next tape that I do just to get some usage out of it and the same goes for my 303 as well really I want to really incorporate that into my next tape as well so this video is going to be quite a lot of talking and just describing what I actually did there's not going to be that much music uh, but if you are interested I'm going to be sharing exactly what I've done so there might be some interesting tips that will help you out along the way. So I actually use my Zoom H5 recorder as well, I use these three things and I'll explain a little bit why I use that a, a bit later in the video and basically these are the main three components of my workflow when I'm making beats. So this is the main hub is always the SX and that's mainly because the speed of it is really really fast compared to the older versions like the 202. The 202 is incredibly slow at deleting uh, samples especially if they're recorded in hi-fi especially if they're 10 to 15 seconds long you're going to be waiting a, about five to six seconds to delete a sample on this thing so can't really use this to make full beats I mean it can be done obviously but it takes a lot more time and one of the big downsides of this is you can't actually change the level of a sample when it's in the box as far as I'm aware so it can be a bit of a tedious process making full beats on the 202 that's why a lot of 202 tapes that you'll listen to are usually just loops, um, probably a part of a song looped and they'll be messing around with the effects up here. But anyway, let's get on to the methods that I was doing. So as I was saying, this is basically my door. I do everything inside the SX, again because of the speed etc. But what I was doing was using the 202 as a kind of a, an effects pedal in a way. This was. I'd use this before the SX in the flow so my samples were coming into here and then I was recording them into this little loops of, of various jazz songs and all the kind of stuff that I was sampling and then that was going out and into this box via a cable as well so for most the majority of this I was recording I did some experimentation with the different standards of uh, recording you can with the 202 which is one of the really cool features of this so you can record in hi-fi which will pretty much sound as is on the sample. Standard, lo-fi one, lo-fi two, they get more and more gritty and basically they take up less and less memory space as well. So they kind of they get this really crushed uh, lo-fi sound on them. So for the majority of the samples that I recorded in, I was using stereo and standard. That was a really nice crunchy feel to the sample without completely ruining it. Uh, I did experiment with lo-fi one a little bit as well. Lo-Fi 2 is a bit too far gone for samples really, good for making crunchy drum sounds but a bit too far gone for, for samples, you lose that kind of depth in the sample and then your beat sounds quite empty. So I was recording using mainly standard and Lo-Fi 1, I'd record it, the loop into here that I wanted, the bit of the song that I wanted. Uh, most of this tape was just pure loops rather than chopping up samples. I was then recording that from this box into the S SX and that's when the arrangement kind of started so I pretty much always record my sample onto pad one of the bank that I'm working with so I'd use one bank per song and basically I always try and keep that one as is from the 202 so if I wanted to mess around with it I'd copy the pad and then add effects or add a resample so I basically always try and keep the first pad as a kind of like backup in a way that's the first and original sound that's come into the box so I wouldn't apply effects when the sample was coming into this, apart from maybe a bit of compression to, to lift the volume up a bit. That's one thing that I did have to do a few times. So MFX 12 applied on the signal coming in, which you can do with this, it's really nice. Uh, you can do that with any of the SPs. And then, yeah, just putting it straight on pad one, ready to go. In terms of the drums, what I actually do is I usually use A and F to have drum sounds put in there. Uh, for this particular tape I used all the drum sounds are from uh, my lo-fi beat pack, uh, the volume 2 that I've just brought out. If you want to get your hands on that with the Black Friday discount at the moment I'll, uh, I'll pop a link below or in the top right of the video as well. So I'd usually have four hi-hats, four snares and four bass drums and that's usually enough to make about seven or eight tracks. It can get a bit repetitive after a while but I'll also, I also apply quite a lot of effects to the snares and that kind of thing so 
there's plenty of different sounds going on and enough to make a tapes worth of beats in my opinion so then what i'd do if i had a a track on let's say i had a sample on b i'd be playing that and i'd go to my a or f and choose the sounds that i wanted to do copy them from this onto b and as usual i always put my drum sounds as bass snare hi-hat on the bottom three like that in the past i have resampled loops drum loops and then put them onto pad 12 used that as a drum loop and then played samples over the top but I've actually gone the other way with this one and the reason for that was because they were mainly loops of songs and not chops I was kind of really dictated by that loop so I, ha I was having situations where the loop was going you trigger a drum loop and eventually they just end up going out of time so the beauty what you've what, what the beauty of the way of doing this way around was you can listen to the sample as you're playing and you can kind of adjust your finger drumming at the same time and get that really loose feel but it it kind of keeps it in time as well it sounds a bit weird but it does work so your the loop that you've got in might slow down towards the end and then you have to slightly slow your drumming down but then when it gets back to the start again that's when it, it restarts again and you get that bass drum on time and it sounds really nice and loose so that's how I was getting to the sort of arrangement side of it. I, was, I had the loops ready, I had the drums ready down here. I also had various foleys or like sound, like extra sounds to add a bit of thickness to the beat, like a fuzz and hiss and all that kind of thing. I did that from the SP as well. You don't need to use external crackle sounds and that kind of thing in the SP because you've got so much stuff at your disposal. You've got the crackle on MFX16, which is the vinyl sim, which is just a classic effect on this box. And you've also got, uh, I think it's, let's have a look here, Vinyl Sim, and then you've got Noise Gen. If you haven't tried Noise Gen for making background noise before, really give that a go, it's, it's amazing, to be honest. It, it could actually be better than Vinyl Sim. So if you had to MFX 15, bring the hum right down, because the hum's on this knob, bring that right down and, and play around with these two, you get some really nice crackle and sort of nice distorted effects going on on that. Uh, so what I'd get that sound ready. You'd be you'd be able to hear that, and you just record it. You just press record and choose the pad you want, and hit record, and it will record the hiss onto the pad for you. Obviously, if you're one of the vinyl purists, which is completely uh, respectable, you will get the natural hiss off the vinyl anyway. But if you want a little bit more, the MFX 15 and 16 have both got really nice, sweet, uh, sweet little effects. So this is where the H5 comes in. Now, the H5. The reason I use this is because I'm actually having a problem with my laptop at the moment where when I record in, I'll be recording on the, it, it looks like it's recording fine and when I listen back it's like judders and it's cut up which is really annoying because it, I, I pay quite a lot of money for my laptop. It could be something to do with my audio interface. Um, I've just actually upgraded the drivers on that this morning and it, fingers crossed it looks like it might have actually fixed the issue. So. If I, if I would have done that before, I would have recorded then straight into a door, to be honest. And that is the one point where I do have to use a door, because you're going to have to record the source into some point. Um, but for this tape, I used the H5. So what I was doing then is I was actually playing the whole beat live into the H5. I was finger drumming along live and doing the pauses and everything that I wanted to do. If it, if it went wrong at any point, literally just had to delete it on here. I uh, hope you can see that, I hope that's in shot. Literally just had to delete it on here and then re-record it back in again. I will do another video all about this because a lot of people have asked what this little black box is. Uh, it is essentially just a recording device, that's all it is. And you've got the microphones on the top, but as you can see, like I am with this video, you can go straight into the bottom as well. So that's just a recording device. So yeah, that was it, really. That's pretty much the whole process. It would be a case of recording into the 202, getting some of the grit from that, recording out of that into the SP and then arranging the pads the way I wanted them and drumming along live and putting that out into the Zoom H5. As I said, if you've got a door or a way you can record directly onto your laptop, that's also gonna work for you perfectly well. And if I would have fixed this issue with my laptop, I would have done that instead. Um, but this is actually really cool for getting the two dials, you can just get the levels right and everything. Uh, and then, always put my headphones into this one just to check that everything's sounding all right at the source of where it's actually recording the final thing was i would record i would then get these uh wav files from this and just put them in ableton and the only reason for this is i know this sounds like oh well it's not doorless if you use an ableton but 
all I was doing is slightly bumping the volume of them so I would normalize it and then just bump the volume just so they're not really quiet when I was uploading them to SoundCloud and then I also used Ableton to arrange all the files together so it was just one big tape so I think that's basically everything if you do have any questions guys obviously feel free to leave a comment below and I always respond to the comments so if you do have any questions about how I made this or if you think I might have missed anything uh, please just leave a comment and let me know obviously please please hit subscribe as well there's still a lot of you out there that are watching my videos but not subscribed so I'd really appreciate that if you could hit the subscribe button and yeah head over to SoundCloud and give my tape a listen and see what you think I'd love some feedback on it and as I said as well all the drums are used in it they're in my beat pack volume 2 and my beat pack lo-fi drums volume 1 and lo-fi drums volume 2 they're all on sale at the moment 25% off so if you did want to get some uh, cheap lo-fi drums head over there and get them for me and it help, helps with the channel as well thank you to my patreon supporters as well there's uh, only a few of you at the moment but i really appreciate the donations that you're giving to me keeps the channel ticking over with various things that i need to buy like batteries etc so really really appreciate that and that's it really guys i hope you enjoyed this i hope it was useful for you to understand how i put tapes together and maybe it gives you some inspiration to to make some of your own so keep making beats and i'll be back again very soon with more content peace